to hell. Hale's Navy. No way. Big way. Directed by Brian Spicer. Toot toot! Time to get on the McHale's Navy train! I guess a, a boat would be more thematically accurate. Uh, this really brings back memories of seeing this on TV all the time and deciding to watch something else. But I have seen it now, and let me tell ya, if you're gonna be bad, you might as well go for the gold. And Mikhail's Navy has the Midas touch. Mikhail's Navy is a cautionary tale of big bucks half-assery. It cost $31 million to make, and made back about $4.5 million. A box office success. Oh, and it made back $14,000 in Spain three years later for some reason? I don't know how accurate IMDb is in this case. But how could a big-budget feature co-produced by and starring Tom Arnold be anything but number one? It's shocking, but true. This is a star-studded fair. Make no mistake, there are some real names attached to this who must have made some bad monkey's paw wishes. Tim Curry, Ernest Borgnine, who was the original Mikhail, Bruce Campbell, Deborah Messing, and a handful of other well-knowns that tend to only be in good movies when it's a fluke, like David Alan Greer and French Stewart. Oh, and uh, by the way, Dean Stockwell's in this. Hey look, I'm not proud, but I'm comfortable with who I am. And I gotta say, when Dean Stockwell did comedies, he didn't just pick bad ones. They were legendarily bad. It's uncanny. Except for the one he did that got him nominated for an Oscar. This got him nominated at the Stinker Awards for Worst Supporting Actor. Really now? Really? Out of all the people in this, he's the one they singled out? It's your roll, banana butt. <laughs> but look, hey, Bruce Campbell and Dean Stockwell were in a movie together. Two titans and one colossal failure. I've never seen the TV show this is based off of, but I gotta believe it's better than this. McHale's Navy follows the exploits of Quentin McHale, Tom Arnold, and his band of merry mischief makers in the Navy. Major Vladikov, played by Tim Curry, is the second best terrorist in the world and plans to launch some nukes unless McHale and his men can stop him. I hope you laughed at the second best terrorist in the world line, because this movie is under the impression it's their funniest running gag. He is perhaps the second greatest terrorist in the world. Except that you're the second best terrorist in the world. Second best? Now, I heard that this guy's supposed to be like the second best terrorist in the world. When you are dealing with the number two terrorist, can't be the second greatest terrorist in the world forever. <laughs> I got a feeling we're gonna be seeing a lot of bushwhacked in this review. If you want the real scoop on McHale's Navy, Bruce Campbell's book has got some pretty juicy stuff. Basically, the supporting actors didn't have any lines in the script and had to make up about 90% of their dialogue. But that's cool, because Tom Arnold would just roll onto set, decide he didn't feel like saying many lines, and just give them his. There's a bit where these guys are doing a comedy show, and Bruce Campbell came up with an entire vaudeville routine that just ends up in the background over Tom Arnold's shoulder. My favorite, though, absolute favorite bit of trivia is that Brian Haley, who plays one of the sailors, decided one day that during their scene, for no reason whatsoever, he was going to paint his shirt on. That's it. That's the joke. So in the background of one of these scenes, even though you'd never know it, his shirt is paint. No one would ever be able to tell that. That's just a private joke for them. But lordy does it make me happy. Honestly, it's funnier than anything in the script, so hey, good on that guy. Although, to be fair, it is kind of hard to tell what's a terrible joke from the script and what's something they just came up with that day. There's a lot of blame to go around in McHale's Navy. But probably most of it goes to Tom Arnold, who you can just tell was very lazy about this. It's evident from the moment you see him on screen. Come on! What a pig. I mean, he's starring in an action movie, and he doesn't want to do any action. Or film very much. He's the title character. His first big action scene is 60% sitting. Didn't they shrink? I'm an action star! I don't feel bad making fun of him, he was lazy. How 
terribly do they portray the character of Mikhail in Mikhail's Navy? By the time he's blown up in the first act, I feel like I barely know him. He's so uninvolved with the rest of the movie to that point. If I was writing this and it wasn't called Mikhail's Navy, he would just be like a background character. He'd be the one you kill in the first 10 minutes to motivate the real protagonist. You feel nothing when he's potentially dead. What a dick. Kinda... Kinda means something when Mikhail is sort of an afterthought in Mikhail's Navy. Now that I think about it, the Navy was kind of an afterthought, too. I sort of hope that they had to come up with their one character trait on set, because if this was something that was in the script and not something they came up with, like, five minutes beforehand, lordy. Oh, yeah. For instance, a uh, French steward's character likes sleeping in trees. That's it. That's the joke. He just likes sleeping in trees. No punchline needed. in this that showed up in the third act that I wasn't even sure were part of this movie up until then. There's a guy in the first act who's like addicted to fruit punch you never see again. You can't go two seconds without seeing Mikhail's lazy ass name branded on something, but heaven help you if you're actually familiar with the members of his crew. You think you need to rustle up one of those vid links for me real quick? That's why I'm here. I guess I'm the tech guy, whoever I am. <laughs> I'll tell you who the real star of this movie is. This fly buzzing around David Allen Greer's ass. Mikhail's not in the Navy anymore when this movie starts. Just so you know. But his deal is that he sneaks onto this naval base every so often with zany money-making schemes, perpetuated by his Navy friends and usually at the expense of the uptight higher-ups. No! I feel like maybe the script needed a second pass at these schemes because they're like... nothing. I mean, there's this whole bit about ice cream and... I, I don't know, like, what's the joke? That ice cream flavors are fun to say? Mango, tango, bango berry. Banana boat, chunky cherry. Funky, lumpy, monkey berry. Lucy, goosey, scary berry. And just plain berry. Who's that? Mikhail House! Mikhail! Most of his stuff barely qualifies as a scheme. He's not even an annoyance, he's just puzzling. Maybe if he didn't spend so much money labeling everything with his name like some sort of egomaniacal psychopath, he would need to be scheming so much. Like, calm down, dude. He's even branded the villain with his name. It's like they're reminding us that he's the main character or else we'd forget. But it just comes off like he's a self-absorbed asshole, which he is. That's Lieutenant Commander Mikhail to you, Carpenter. I know, it's weird. <laughs> And who's going to be dealing with Mikhail's lukewarm schemes? Captain Binghamton, played by Dean Stockwell. He's sort of a secondary villain in that he's kinda gotta stick up his butt and is befuddled a lot. And maybe in the 11th hour he does something affecting the plot. He's none too happy having been given this crap assignment because he sunk the love boat? Isn't that the guy that sank the love boat? Ain't that the guy who sunk the love boat? Oh yeah. Who's that? He spends a lot of time reacting to things that don't really need reacting to. The main island in the San Ysidro chain, located right between Cuba and the Virgin Islands. <laughs> but the locals just shortened the Ysidro to Sidsy San Sid, sir. You're a moron, aren't you? What? Man, oh man, how is Mikhail gonna be able to compete in this battle of wits? You know, your boyfriend's kind of rude. I'm not her boyfriend. Did you guys break up? She was never my girlfriend. Just lovers, huh? I got him! That's too clever! I find it hard to root for Mikhail because, I mean, Binghamton is right. The guy sells a bunch of contraband and acts like a dick. I mean, there are zero endearing qualities about him. The audience is supposed to like this guy, right? Ha, I'm the main character. There's also a subplot about these adorable baseball boys on a little league team Mikhail runs that feels unnecessary but is somehow woven into the terrorist plot. They probably thought this makes Mikhail more likable, but it doesn't. Oh no, the terrorists are building over the baseball field! The monsters! 
You guys are gonna be called Mikhail's Navy. But we're not in the Navy and neither are you! Me, Mikhail! There are three speaking roles for women in this, and the single significant one only gets to do one thing for the plot and is given the privilege of tearing up a kid's baseball field with Tom Arnold in the end. Sweet deal. And they say there are no good roles for women. <laughs> Boy, you put up with a lot of crap. The other two female speaking roles are nurse and shopkeep. There is a lot of cringeworthy stuff in this movie, but I think if there is one saving grace, Tim Curry puts on the exact performance that this character warrants. <laughs> Did this theatrical 1997 film really use a double wah-wah trumpet? Really? We're gonna go there? If you can't kill Tom Arnold when you're armed with a bunch of missiles and he's just standing around his house, I don't even know how you got to be second best terrorist in the world. Oh, Pentagon wipe to the Pentagon! Clever! Anyway, the president be hating these terrorists, and Mikhail has a prior history with them, so the Navy has got to recruit Mikhail back for this mission. Mikhail is a hard sell. No. But eventually they do get him on board. That is, if he can deal with Binghamton and his cronies' interference. <laughs> he can. take this moment to remind you all that this movie cost 31 million dollars. By the way, this whole excursion ends with them stealing some vodka and leaving the weapons behind, so... Kinda got some blood on your hands, Mikhail. Oh my god! I can't believe terrorist McTerrorface is trying to steal some weapon thing I had no idea he knew about, but anyway, I somehow have an animation of it at the ready to show you, so here you go! Once Mikhail is back in the game, the film just comes to a standstill. It's a never-ending string of distracting side quests until we can get back to the actual movie. There's a lot of walking around in the dark, sweating into Hawaiian shirts, and dinking around. Not terribly excite... Not terribly exciting stuff to watch or review. You might want to light a few more candles to cover up my stink. <sighs> Dialogue. You boys can take this one. Thank God for Bruce Campbell. Buenas noches, senorita. Buenas noches. Are you way be in town? <laughs> <laughs> I did laugh at French Stewart getting beat up in the bar fight, though. <laughs> this bar fight with all the sailors is the most action-packed scene of the film up to that point, and Mikhail's not even there. You got this one, man. And yeah, yeah, in the span of 30 seconds, they managed to pull these costumes and fake beard out of their ass to break them out of jail. Makes sense. And your dad ended up saving a lot of lives, including mine. <sighs> Trouble was he couldn't save his own. Okay, okay, enough. You made this kid cry for this movie? I'm so insincere. Goodbye. His whole backstory with Vladikov doesn't even make any sense. Well, you know, I heard that this guy's supposed to be, like, the second best terrorist in the world now. Yeah, but he wanted to be the best. Yeah, after we captured him, the Pentagon said we couldn't keep both of them, so we had to drive to the airport and let him go. They couldn't keep two terrorists, so they had to let him go? The hell? Almost as dumb as that is their plan to jam Vladikov's signal by putting on a variety show. Why do they have to perform anything? They're just jamming a signal. They could fill the blank wall. Thank you, Ensign Parker. You know, it's good to see you back in men's clothing. <laughs> he didn't notice until now it was him behind this? It's called Mikha Ha Hale's Comedy Mambo. David Allen Greer said it. There's a big banner behind them. You have to fix this. This is horrible. Remember Dean Stockwell's character from about six hours ago? Well, he's gonna do something. I guess the film figured it probably needed to start going somewhere. Guys like Binghamton are always willing to get men killed for their own egos. You shouldn't throw stones in glass houses, Mikhail. Binghamton decides to go after Vladikov himself, blow some stuff up, and I guess that's bad. I don't know. But he sure gets his later! Hey, up. Let's get the game started! <laughs> he 
set on fire. <laughs> what a hilarious come up and <laughs> check out this awesome climax, guys. What a dick. Okay, that was funny. Mikhail is quick to take all the credit for taking Vladikov down, but like, mostly he stood in the boat and did nothing while the other guys did all the work. So there's that. But then we find out that their commanding officer was Mikhail's dad the whole time? No wonder he got preferential treatment. Mikhail was hugely unqualified for this mission, and now I know why he was selected. Suddenly, this whole movie is starting to make a lot more sense. You lazy fuck. Uh... I never could pin one of these things on a woman. I know I'm a seasoned veteran and we're both professional military personnel, but you're a woman and I can't pin this medal on you. Ha ha ha. All your accomplishments are overshadowed by your gender. I got a baseball field and a motorcycle and you guys got nothing. Looks like you got a raw deal. Yeah. Well, looks like I'm retired again. <laughs> Mikhail's Navy is a bad movie, there's no doubt about it. But did I enjoy watching it? Yes, I did. There's something awe-inspiring about a comedy that manages to make you respond to every joke with... What? Tom Arnold is extraordinarily lazy and unlikable, and many talented actors were forced to hold their own in nonsense roles. All that considered, the hammy acting is delicious. I did get a lot of laughs at the movie's expense, and I felt it was worth watching more than once. So set sail for hijinks and pick this one up. Allison. Suck it in, mister. I'm totally sucked, sir. <laughs>